So here's the thought experiment. I've revived the Neanderthals, and I'm running them through every major real world event that's happened since their extinction to see how they might adapt. Because in a nutshell, that's all evolution really is. It's just adapting to the environment over time. And there are three extinction level events that had enough pressure to make them evolve. But they only get more and more deadly as we go. Is there a limit to how strong they could become? What would they look like when we're done? Starting with the first event, the last glacial maximum. This was the coldest point of the Ice Age, and it had the most astronomical impact on their strength, explosiveness, and brain development. In simple terms, the last glacial maximum was the peak of the Ice Age. It's the coldest the Earth has been in the last 100,000 years. And here's the fun part, the Neanderthals had already gone extinct 14,000 years before it. So in this experiment, every single year after their revival, the world just keeps getting colder. This will push them way beyond their natural cold limits. Which leads to our Neanderthals' first new evolutionary change. They are fat. For the next 14,000 years, all the adaptations they had for the cold are pushed to the extreme. That means their muscle, their stockiness, their broad noses, their height, becoming shorter, and metabolism are just insane. Or in layman's terms, they're just extremely strong and fat. However, there is a trait that shows a lot more growth than any of the others, and you'll never guess what it is. When I compared the Neanderthal against its predecessor, Homo heidelbergensis, which underwent a similar mass cooling event at the beginning of the Ice Age, I actually discovered a rapid increase of brain size. So over 14,000 years of mass cooling, not only did the new Neanderthals become stronger, faster, and more durable than their predecessors, but they also just became extremely intelligent. And they had larger noses, and they had larger lung capacity, plus they're shorter, which is obviously the superior height. Essentially, they're shorter, better, faster, stronger. They, 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 they won't kill me. They only make me stronger. <laughs> After researching this next event, I thought I'd have to scrap the whole video. Over a course of 15,000 years from the last glacial maximum, the Earth, it starts to warm. You may think, oh yay, wow, palm trees and coconuts and beaches. Actually, they might die from starvation. Pretty cool. I would say that is awesome sauce. The main food sources of our new Neanderthals, cave bears, mammoths, etc., are starting to go extinct. And without food, the Neanderthals will be next. But would you get a load of that weather? It's hotter than... me. <laughs> the hot weather made our Neanderthals skinny. I mentioned our new Neanderthals got shorter, stockier, stronger with cold weather, but with warm weather, they get taller and longer to dissipate heat faster. And their noses are gonna get smaller as they're used less for warming the cold air. They are slowly making the transition from sumo wrestler to supermodel, eating disorders and all, because we still have a major food problem to solve, which I found a solution for. It's called procrastination. Megafauna numbers are dwindling, but they're not completely dissipated. They still eat and hunt large animals, making them still superhuman, but they're gonna start supplementing those calories with foraging or smaller prey. And without those huge animals feeding their monstrous bodies, slender, more calorie efficient bodies will be preferred. And with less dangerous hunts, the population increases. Those Neanderthals are getting busy! Yeah! Which also makes the development of new technologies faster, like the subscribe button. So during the time since the last glacial maximum till the end of the Ice Age, our new Neanderthals got a slight boost of height, cuter noses, better technology, more fruits and veggies in their diet, and a slight nerf on their godlike strength. But we still have 11,700 years until the present day. That's enough time to live through all of recorded history twice. Which brings me to the most dangerous era of their evolution, the Holocene era, 
or as I like to call it, the genocide era. It's during this time we see some of the most influential disasters of human history. There are officially no more megafauna, the earth will warm, flooding land bridges, a cooling event known as the Little Ice Age occurs, diseases such as the bubonic plague and influenza will arise. In Eurasia, volcanic eruptions will cause prolonged winters, and the rise of new technologies may even impact their physicality and appearance. I think now is the right time. What is this progress bar? Well, evolution isn't free. It occurs because the new traits help the species to survive better, and the old traits are causing people to die. The thing is, if we assume the Neanderthals are breeding at a replacement pace, they may not survive this next era. I literally named it the Genocide Era. They will get stronger, but at the cost of the most massive loss of lives yet. If even one of them survives, it will become the most powerful human species to ever live. I will approximate the numbers as accurately as I can. But if this bar gets to zero and the science says they die, then they will die. In order we first have to deal with the megafauna extinction. Food is gone, people are dying, they need to get smarter. We're going to see changes in jaw robustness, increased reliance on cooperative hunting strategies, and a potential minor reduction in average body size and bite force as brute strength becomes less advantageous. Next, apocalypse. An abrupt cooling event interrupted the warming of the Holocene for a few centuries. Not enough time to see any major physical changes, but we will see minor changes such as increases of fat storage and endurance, as well as a switch to a more nomadic lifestyle. Oh, you're starting to like the cold? Too bad, punk! For the next 4,000 years, we have the Holocene Climactic Optimum. It's a period of massive forest growth. You're gonna love this. In forested areas, selection may favor short range, ambush hunting strategies, with the main game likely being boars, deer, piglets, and birds. I'm smelling upgrades for our new Neanderthals, who are still, keep in mind, stronger than the originals. To successfully hunt, our new Neanderthals need to become faster, to maneuver through trees and pursue prey at incredible speeds. Their senses will see a sharp incline to hunt down and track prey. Grip strength increases, as does upper body strength for climbing trees and grappling with animals. We may even see some thicker bones due to work with lots of thick logs and wood. Basically, Wolverine-like upgrades to the new Neanderthals. But good times for them also mean good times for other things. There's something approaching from the east. Something that could very well wipe this new species off the planet. Around this time, about 8,000 years ago, expanding into eastern and southeastern Europe, come droves of ferocious lions, along with the persistence of other predators such as bears and wolves, competing for food with the new Neanderthals and, if they're hungry enough, eating them. If they want to survive, they'll have no choice but to work with each other to defend themselves, increase muscle strength and bone robusticity in predator-dense areas, and create more deadly weapons. Let's take a look at the scoreboard for the results. Not as bad as it could have been, but still, I'm not liking how close they're getting. But I have great news. We only have four events left till we get to the modern age. And if any one of them are as intense as the last glacial maximum, they'll all be dead and in the ground. So let's just do them all at once. Hey. Wait, 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 wait! Please welcome to the stage volcanic eruptions, the little ice age, the bubonic plague, and the Spanish flu! All four of these events have some of the highest kill counts of all human history. If the Neanderthals survive this, they will have touched superhuman level. Number one, volcanic eruptions pump huge amounts of toxic fumes into the air, causing massive winters, causing those cold adaptations to take precedence, such as shorter limbs, bigger muscles, and high metabolisms. It also causes diseases to swarm. Strong immune systems and knowledge of medicines is going to become the norm. Number two, the Little Ice Age. The cold traits are pushed even further, becoming thicker, fatter, and stronger, likely leading to the development of much warmer clothes. Number three, the bubonic plague. Surviving this catastrophe requires insane immune systems and high knowledge of medical aid. 
And the same adaptations are true for number four, the Spanish flu, leaving us with a very, very small amount of survivors. By my very rough approximation, about 5,000 that have now been endowed with massive bodies, clothes, medicine, and superhuman immune systems. So if Neanderthals never stopped evolving, these are the increases in stats, resulting in an unkillable superhuman mutant. YouTube thinks that you'll like this video, so why don't you shmorp it? That's right, you heard me. Hover your mouse over it and shmorp it. It means click, but I'm saying it weird because it's funny. Kind of, I don't know. I'm making a new word. Shmorp it. Shmorp. I think shmorp is, shmorp is a good word.